Starting work on a new project is always exciting, almost as equally exciting as finishing a project. How do you keep that excitement while working on a project? And how do you deal with all the ups and downs that happen in between? The trick is to keep finishing things, not just starting. This video will show you how to manage work in progress and keep the project on track. Before we start, I'd like to thank our Scrum Master for showing you what I'm talking about. Visualizing the team's progress helps the team stay on the right track. Before approaching a project, the team needs to assess all the tasks, get them in the right order, pinpoint due dates, choose how they will visualize the process, and select their priorities. Whether you use a Kanban, a timeline view, or a Gantt chart, it's especially useful to devise a system that will alert the team and managers when projects or processes start to go downhill. Once the work on a project begins, the team can face many obstacles and bottlenecks, such as being late with delivery and having too many tasks pile up as work in progress, which can result in overstepping due dates. There are several steps you can take to resolve such situations. First, you need a clear overview of the project that will show items in progress piling up. If you're using the Kanban overview, this can be really easy to do. If too many tasks are in progress, that can jeopardize both taking up new tasks and working on finishing the current ones. The team agrees on the number of items that can be labeled work in progress and tries not to add more tasks than agreed. Another approach is to specify how many items or user story points can be in a given column at any given time. Just write down the maximum column capacity next to the column name and ensure that no work enters the column until items from it move forward and make space. These techniques allow the team to focus on finishing the tasks they have already begun working on before picking up new tasks. The project manager should work with the team to determine why tasks are piling up. Is it because there aren't enough resources or because items are wrongly assessed in the first place? Perhaps some tasks should be given more resources and time from the start, or is it a result of the lack of criteria when assessing the tasks? Whatever it is, finding out the reason will help you resolve the issue. Too many items keep getting stuck in a work in progress. What should you do? To track how much work in progress affects your team on a monthly basis, use the discipline track record technique. In this technique, you put one green or one red dot on your calendar for each day the team has overstepped the number of tasks labeled as work in progress or overreached column's maximum capacity. Capacity control in Kanban is a separate topic in itself, so we'll discuss it in detail in one of our future videos. It's a great way to prevent tasks from piling up and it gives a clear overview of how many days each sprint work in progress has caused an issue. You can also put dots on tasks to show how many days it took to complete. Usually, one task lasts approximately one day. If the task was not finished during the first day, on the next day it gets a second dot, and a third on the third day, and so on. Two or more dots on a task are a clear sign that assistance is needed with that item. Never let a colleague get stuck when there are two or more dots on a task. By that time, it should become a team effort. Another great idea is to mark tasks that have blockers. You can do this with a magnet, emoji, or sticky note stating the blocker. Doing something about blockers at the right time can help prevent tasks from piling up. Tasks that depend on other tasks must wait for the other tasks to be finished before they can proceed. That is why it is extremely important to mark dependencies between tasks. In Active Collab, this is very easy to achieve. Using the timeline view, you can see the dependencies that link the tasks to each other and add new ones or break them in a couple of clicks. If the task gets stuck because of a dependent task, the team should first resolve the task that comes first before moving forward. You can also use an hourglass scrum wall technique to reduce work in progress. As the team works on a user's story, it is shown in an hourglass that flows downward. Divide the hourglass into three sections, the most narrow part of it being the place where you put items that are labeled work in progress. Naturally, you cannot squeeze too many items in this area, so limit it to two items tops. Bottlenecks usually occur in QA, quality assurance, when the item is finished but still needs to be tested. The team can resolve this and remove items from work in progress by helping the testers with testing software to help remove bottlenecks. Yes, developers can do testing as well. If your goal is to get working software in the hands of customers as soon as possible, then it's perfectly fine for them to help out. They can use their experience to make testing easier, figure out what should be automated, and keep the working features flowing out with ease. 
As you can see, there are many ways in which you can limit the work in progress to boost your team's productivity. Have you tried any of these methods or devised some of your own? Share your thoughts in the comments, and we'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Bye for now, and thanks for watching. This video will show you how many items next to the column name and keep the working feature flowing 